Hello, everyone, and welcome to our House of the Dragon coverage here over at We Know Scripted TV. We know House of the Dragon, and we know Game of Thrones. I'm your host, Turn Armstrong, and we are here today to run through everything you need to know about season two of House of the Dragon in advance of season two of House of the Dragon. That includes, we're going to talk about what happened in season one, what you need to catch up on, and what maybe we can expect from season two as we head into uh, what I hope will be a very exciting season. I'm with my co-host, Grace Leader. How are you doing, Grace? I'm good. Have you chosen, Taryn? Are you, are you choosing? Have you picked which side you're on? That's the big thing of House of the Dragon season two. All must choose, Taryn. I mean, uh, if our background says anything about it, we've chosen to stay neutral. <laughs> it's true. I, it's, I think a tough sell for Team Green, but we shall see. It's a I'm... tough sell. <laughs> I have I have specific reasons why it's a specifically tough sell for Team Green that we will talk about when we get into the recap uh, for yeah. what you need to know about season one. But um, you know, the, definitely big part of the marketing. Team Green, Team Black. I feel like Team Green is just listen. I get it. You want to be edgy. All right. I We all know. Mm -hmm. We know where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. You need to be, oh, I'm contrarian. A little high on their tower, I would say, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, I am very excited for House of the Dragon. I'm, I, I was a huge Game of Thrones fan. We all know what happened to the end of Game of Thrones. We don't need to talk about that here. Um, I think a smidgen of redemption for the Game of Thrones universe when House of the Dragon season one premiered. I think a pretty great season of television, even if there's some things I was like, oh, you're you're slipping into it. You're doing it. Um, very excited for season two. Um, notably, lost a showrunner. I think uh, Spachek has, has left. It's just Ryan Condal showrunning, although um, uh, Miguel Spachek has stayed on as executive producer. So take that for what you will. But I'm very excited for season two of House of the Dragon to be on our television screens uh, this summer, Taryn. Yes. And so... This is what this is what the plan is. This is what we're here for. Uh, we will be covering the show week to week uh, on Sunday nights after it airs. We will be live. We will be talking through the events of the episode, recapping it uh, here on this. Uh, we know House of the Dragon uh, podcast, um, but we are also doing another podcast. We That's are right. the tastemakers. And uh, every week we'll be talking about TV as a whole, bigger picture stuff. So uh, you can come here for the House of the Dragon specific stuff, but then also make sure you go and listen to the Tastemakers every week where we'll be talking bigger picture stuff about House of the Dragon and other shows that are on in the context of what's been going on. We have already released uh, the first episode of the Tastemakers where we have gone through the best shows so far of the year uh, here in 2024. Um, but if you want to listen to House of the Dragon stuff, you can uh, subscribe at robhaswebsite.com slash scripted for uh, the We Know Scripted TV stuff. Robhaswebsite.com slash We Know Thrones for all of the Game of Thrones content. There will be some other coverage uh, as well as other Game of Thrones sh universe shows that are coming out at some point. We'll talk about Not those. Not the Jon Snow show. The Not that one. Not they that didn't one. They, no. they didn't have a good idea for a story. So they so. listen. Not that one. We know Game of Thrones, they knew nothing. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. um, and of course, you can go to robswebsite.com slash subscribe uh, to get all of this stuff uh, yeah. for, for it all. And you can watch this, if you're listening, you can watch this on YouTube as well uh, on the We Know Scripted TV YouTube channel. So that is, uh, that is where we are. Yes. And let, let's talk, about, let's talk well, about where we were. Well, before we get to where we were, perhaps okay. we should highlight uh, where we will be, uh, as we know, uh, House of the Dragon, just to give you a bit of a sneak peek of the coverage that will be happening. So you and I, Sunday nights, talking about the show. A little bit later in the week, I believe Rob and Josh are going to be talking House of the Dragon once again. Sounds like Rob may be uh, being dragged, uh, dragoned along. <laughs> Uh, a smidge by one Josh Wiggler. Um, so that should be fun. I believe, I believe there's some more other um, content as well. And then I know the recap kickback is, is going to be talking house of the dragon. So there's lots of house of the dragon coverage here on the, we now scripted uh, TV network. So that is exciting. We're just first boots on the ground. Taryn. First boots on the ground, not first boots from. That's right. Podcast. <laughs> well, maybe who knows? Probably not. I don't think so. I think people are going to be pretty excited about house of the dragon coverage. So, yeah. 
All right. Well, uh, here's what we wanted to do. So in advance of season two starting, this happens to me a lot. Okay. Uh, I, there's the, the way that the TV works nowadays is that there's like two to three years in between seasons. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. And it's atrocious and it's ridiculous. And then you're waiting so long. By the time you start the next season, you're like, wait, where did we leave off? What happened? Uh, and they maybe give you like a 30 second like string of random scenes to be like previously on or in season one. Uh, but but most of the time it's useless. Um, and I, sometimes you just need a little catch up. You just need to you just need to get back in the mood. You need to get back uh, like uh, I, what are all these names? You know, <laughs> who are all these people uh -huh. uh, like we want to set the stage and we want to sort of like give you a taste of. Uh, I think hopefully what to expect in season two. We have both read the book, uh, yes. Fire and Blood. So mm -hmm. we do know for the most part what is coming. We will not be spoiling anything uh, in in the recaps or anything like that. Like we are we are strictly uh, non-spoilery. Um, but uh, but we do know what's important to know and uh, and stuff like that. So that is that is our goal here. Yeah, there'll be no spoiling of season two. Don't you worry. But um, yeah, we do know. I'm, I'm very excited for season two. Um, but I, I thought it was important. I went back and reread Fire and Blood. Um, I didn't reread all of it. I read from basically where a little bit before actually the show starts. And then um, I read to the end of the book. And then I rewatched season one of the show. So I feel I'm 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 in House of the Dragon territory for sure. Um, right you now. You are in the house. Of I'm the in dragon. the house of the dragon. Yeah. yeah. Should should we start with where I think it all begins, which is with the crowning of a particular king, uh, Taryn? That's that's one Viserys target. My guy. That's your guy. It's my guy. Yeah. The actor, at least. The actor. <laughs> um, I think most importantly about King Viserys's uh, reign is that he is basically elected as heir at something called the Great Council. It happens uh, while the current king uh, is, is still alive. But he there's a little bit of succession crisis because um, all of his sons have died, uh, uh, the current the, the, the king and uh, not not King Viserys, but uh, his grandfather, King Jaehaerys. Uh, definitely. We will definitely won't get any names mixed up on this podcast because we're professionals. Um, king Jaehaerys having a bit of succession crisis doesn't know who should crown as king. Viserys is the son of Balan Targaryen, and these names aren't super important, but this this idea of how Viserys becomes king is pretty important. And he gets named king over Rhaenys Targaryen, who is the firstborn daughter of the eldest son, uh, Aegon, who has also passed away. So they basically decide at the Great Council it's more important that there is a living male heir who takes the throne over um, arguably a woman who maybe has a better claim to the throne. But the fact that Viserys is a dude gives him uh, legitimacy over Rhaenys. So he is named heir, and eventually when his grandfather dies, he becomes king. And when we meet him at the beginning of the show, um, I believe he's about nine years into his reign. Um, and uh, he's doing fine. He's living life. He's hanging out. He's seeing an attorney. He's great. This is, yeah, your, and, this is your dude. And again, like the important part here is that uh, it was a big thing. That uh, the, sort of like the, the proper line of succession might have pointed to uh, Rhaenys, but uh, but they went with a male instead uh, because that was more important. That, of course, is important to the current storyline that we see in House of the Dragon, where uh, once again, it's going to be a, a decision between should we go with the firstborn woman or a like a, a, a guy, a male, a boy. Uh, is that more important? Yeah. Well, bit of a problem for one King Viserys, Taryn. He doesn't have a son when we start the show. He doesn't have a son. But luckily, his wife, Queen Emma Targaryen, um, who I believe is his cousin, uh, so we get into that pretty quick, um, she is pregnant, and she's about to, to give birth. Unfortunately, she does. Uh, she she, she um, dies in childbirth, and the baby um, lasts for a day and dies, thus leaving uh, our only heir to Viserys Targaryen and his wife, Emma Targaryen, as Rhaenyra Targaryen, a very central figure to the show, Taryn. Yes. Uh, one of the main characters, the uh, the lead of Team Black. Um, and uh, this is this is important, right? Like, she is going to be essentially uh, chosen as the the successor, 
um, uh, to her father, uh, despite the fact that there might be a little bit of a hubbub about the fact that she's a woman, especially given that her father was the guy that was chosen over a woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, important to note a few things. One is there is another male who's in the picture, which is Viserys's younger brother, Damon Targaryen, played by the great Matt Smith. Um, mm -hmm. He very quickly, the day after uh, Viserys's um, child dies after being born, is heard overheard in a brothel saying that uh, he he cheerses to the dead child, saying he was an heir for a day, and this does not please Viserys Targaryen. Damon is a little bit of a wild card. He has been on the rogue. He's been on the council before um, uh, the king's council. He was dismissed from the council. He is the commander of the city guard. He's actually the person who um, uh, makes it so that they wear gold cloaks, but they use a little bit of a violent tendency. I believe we see some private parts uh, actually disposed. He's of. Chopping some parts off, you know. He's 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 got them under his command. So he's got the 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 king's guard. But people think that if Viserys dies and Damon has a claim to the throne, this might not be the greatest dude to be king. And actually, there's a previous king, um, Megar the Cruel, who sort of had a similar reign that sort of almost broke the Targaryen dynasty. And people are very worried that perhaps Damon might be the second coming of that and officially break it. But there's one other little thing. That Viserys knows that nobody else knows, which is that he knows of the Song of Ice and Fire, which is a prophecy that Aegon the Conqueror, the first Targaryen king to come, knows about. That one day there shall be an invasion of Westeros, and you need a right, the right ruler to be able to defend against that. And it's actually his belief that Rhaenyra is best suited to do that. So he tells her this, but also uh, makes all of his uh, vassals uh, bend the knee and Claire, declare uh, uh, Rhaenyra be the heir to the throne. And that at the time is mostly to protect from Damon potentially eventually, um, you know, causing a little bit of a, a hubbub uh, should, should, should Viserys die. Um, but also because he loves his daughter, seemingly. Terror. Yes, and this this prophecy is a big deal in the show, in the in the, the universe, the lore. Um, it's a show invention uh, that, you know, I, I actually I'm not sure if we ever got confirmation from George Martin that it's like canon in the book universe. Right. Um, but uh, but obviously big implications in terms of what it means for historical events in the past, Aegon the Conqueror and uh, and like, you know, the implications that it has for the current the, the Game of Thrones story of the the, sh the original show proper. One of my favorite things I love um, the most interesting thing about this book uh, being adapted is that the book is told as a, as a history, um, basically written by maesters, um, the sort of scholars of the Westeros universe. And the idea that things that people wrote down might not be actually what happened makes for a fascinating adaptation choice, because yeah. there are several things you'll see throughout the show from season one. Where it's like, ooh, that's not what was written in the book, but it still could be true. And this is one of them that I really, really do like is is uh, tying in the lore from Game of Thrones, which it ended how it ended. But I think that it's it's very fun to say actually Aegon had this 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 prophecy of a song of ice and fire, and actually passed it down to subsequent rulers, and now it's landed in the hands of Viserys, who is actually a little bit more worried about succession even than he maybe would be just normally. Um, I think it's a very fun piece of uh, world building that they've added into the show that makes it very fun if you've read the book to say, oh, that's like kind of right, but not what I thought was going to happen. It's almost surprising the readers who are watching the show. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a bit of a uh, remarrying going on. That's right. A um, little controversial. It's actually mm. uh, to Allison, who you see on the left here, if you're watching us on YouTube. This is Allison Hightower, daughter of Otto Hightower, who is the hand of the king. Um, Otto Hightower, a second-born son um, from Old Town, who um, is a trusted advisor and seemingly uses uh, this relationship to convince his daughter to console the king in his grief. And it ultimately works, in which the relationship is... Uh, blooms so much that ultimately results in a marriage and eventually as the show runs very quick through time as we are doing as well children and in fact sons including mm -hmm. Aegon Targaryen the first born son of Viserys Targaryen and Alicent Hightower yes uh Otto a bit of a sleazeball he's a uh yeah. sort of uh passing his daughter off onto the king so that he can uh, have a little bit more 
influence and power and maybe get those heirs uh you know uh into the onto the throne themselves uh and um and Allison worth noting as well uh kind of like Rhaenyra's bestie yeah. they hang out they're friends yeah. Yeah. uh but things get a little awkward when she starts sleeping with her dad <laughs> I mean, you know, it could be worse, you know, the world of House of the Dragon. But yeah, it does kind of suck for now. There's a lot of things happening here, too, where like Viserys doesn't really want to remarry. He actually does ultimately decline um, uh, a marriage proposal of Rhaenys' uh, daughter, who is quite young at the time, Rhaenys being uh, the queen who never was. She has married Corlys Valerian. He's the sea snake. He is a, a very uh, well-equipped uh, shipman. A sailor um, who is becomes quite prominent. Um, they want to try and like amend that sort of thing by having him marry uh, their daughter. He says no. Uh, she's quite young, which is fair. Not that Allison is like old, <laughs> but still, you know, better maybe. Um, also, Rhaenyra is maybe at the age where like she should maybe start to think about marrying someone, um, and she's actively not wanting uh, to do that. Um, so yeah, lots lots happening. Um, there is one other figure we talked about uh, uh, before who is, uh, is is looming about, which is the one Damon Targaryen, as we've seen. Mm -hmm. He's causing all sorts of of chaos, even after he um, uh, said heir for a day to the to the dead child. Uh, he steals a dragon egg. He runs back to Dragonstone, tries to claim that. Uh, he has to return the egg to uh, to Rhaenyra. He's sort of inferring, like, yeah, I know Rhaenyra, like you're like you know you might be the heir but i'm also here um once aegon is born kind of changes things but he's also a little bit salty and he decides to go off uh and he goes to fight in the in the stepstones uh fights fights wars um basically there's like some pirating going on um and it's kind of been a problem for westeros but not enough that Viserys has ever really wanted to deal with it so daemon goes off to fight it with corlys valerian um as previously mentioned to try and basically like I don't know. Damon's just looking to like feel something. He goes off to war. He makes yeah. a name for himself. He's trying to he's trying to make himself useful. It's also though could be interpreted as like a way for him to gain some more power um, uh -huh. and uh, and potentially threaten what is uh, to be you know Rhaenyra's uh, throne. Um, but then he but then he comes back. He's and king he, of the tides. He's named king of the tides. Yeah, and he 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 kind of plays that up until he doesn't in which he like removes his throne and delivers the throne to Viserys saying like, no, you are my king. Um, he then has a, a raunchy night out with Rhaenyra, uh, sort of shows her flea bottom, the, the sort of like uh, more lurid parts of the, the city. He then abandons her and leaves her. She returns back after to getting side. her all hot and heavy. That's we should true. say. Yes, definitely. And they're like full on, they're full on making out. And then he's like, actually, maybe not. <laughs> and he leaves. And so Rhaenyra comes back. She's feeling away. She uh, sleeps with her Kingsguard, uh, Kristen, Kristen Cole. Um, that's a big no-no from the Kingsguard. Um, not supposed to do that. But like she's kind of had a crush on him. She she picked him actually to be in the Kingsguard and to be sort of like her sworn protector. So there's like a little thing happening uh, between them. And they ultimately have a night out. Um Learning that maybe something has happened uh, with Rhaenyra, although nobody really has the details correct. Um, Viserys and Damon have a little bit of a spat where Damon's like, well, you know, you could just marry me to Rhaenyra <laughs> and then that would be fine. And the succession problem would actually be fine because I could just marry my niece and then problem solved. And Viserys is kind of like, first of all, you have a wife. She's just some random lady who lives in the Vale, but she's there. And also, like, no, you can't actually marry my daughter. Uh, you're my brother. <laughs> so complicated, Taryn. Yeah, not not great. Uh, so once again, Damon is sent packing. Uh, no, no throne for you. He's gone. Um, Rhaenyra does need to wed someone. And so this proposition reemerges about the Valerians, Corlys Valerian, perhaps... Uh, his one of his sons or his son Lanar could marry Rhaenyra so they do unfortunately during the wedding Kristen Cole gets a bit jealous and kills Lanar's uh gay partner <laughs> it's like a yeah, pretty rough so wedding wedding's no good in in Westeros still. not great not great uh so this this photo has uh Rainey's, um it has uh Lanar um and uh What's Corlys. his name? Corlys. The sea snake. The sea snake. Corlys. And actually sneaking right behind Lenor, I believe, is Joffrey, who is going to be the victim of Kristen Cole's uh, mur the murder. Yes, the not but Joffrey from Game of Thrones, but not uh, 
<laughs> in fact, uh, the uh, the boyfriend of uh, of Laner, uh, who is going to marry Rainier. And this, so this is the end of the first half. This is uh, this is where right. the biggest time jump comes into play, um, and where we get a change of actors um, as we jump forward in time after the marriage of Laner uh, and uh, and Rhaenyra. But the the marriage might be a little bit of a problem in that Lenor is is gay, he's yeah. queer. But Rhaenyra is kind of into it and is kind of like, well, you just do your thing and I'll do my thing. Every once in a while, we'll sleep together, we'll have a baby. But like, this will actually be fine. I never really wanted to get married anyway. I want to do my own thing. We can both do our own things. That's fine. Also at the wedding, Damon meets Lena Valerian, who is Lenor's sister. And they seem to kick it off and they will too get married. So Raina, uh, sorry, Rhaenyra and Damon each marry one of the the, the Valerian children. Yes. Uncle uh, and niece marry siblings <laughs> before ultimately marrying each other. <laughs> Are we clearing it all up for you? <laughs> all right. Well, um, so they do that. Un unfortunately for Rhaenyra and Lanor, this whole plan of like every once in a while we'll sleep together and have a baby doesn't go great because instead Rhaenyra sleeps with a, a man named Harwin Strong who is now the new commander of the city uh the the city guard and um he just she just has his babies instead seeming I mean I guess allegedly Taryn we can never actually know allegedly they do look exactly like <laughs> Harwin Strong yeah, so I mean, big thing like you know, Targaryens and Valerians, they have like white hair. Um, uh, the Valerians uh, are, are people; of, they're black in the show. Uh, the children are white boys with dark brown, like black hair. Um, so it seems pretty sure that it could be actually... any. We don't know how genetics work. It could be anything. It's so funny because the show is like a thing where like genetics were so important to Game of Thrones, uh, the mythology of Game of Thrones. But um, yeah, she seems to have three children. Um, with Harwin Strong. Uh, but for all intents, everybody for the most part is just like, these are Rhaenyra's children and Lainor's children. That's who they are. We have uh, we have Jace and Luke um, and Joffrey who gets named after <laughs> the lover who was murdered at the wedding. <laughs> kind of reluctantly, Rhaenyra's like, fine, you can have one baby name. That's fine. Yeah. Um, unfortunately for uh lena they have two children so they have uh damon and, and lena have have children but she dies during the childbirth of the third uh, uh child that's when um, she runs to the dragon and he yeah it's a little roasts her yeah she's like in childbirth the, the baby i think is born um a bit malformed they're pretty closely related <laughs> to damon and lena so the baby yeah it comes out not 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 great um and then she yeah she she chooses to kill herself also um Rhaenyra and Lenor's marriage not going well. Rhaena, Rhaenyra is pretty annoyed with Lenor not really, I feel like, upholding the end of the agreement that they kind of made that he would sort of act kingly. He would like to go back to war. Um, ultimately, they state, Damon and Rhaenyra stage the fake, the faking of Lenor's death so that mm -hmm. he can escape and live with his, his lover, Carl, with a Q, which is not that important, but I love it. So, assumingly, Lenor has died, and to Corlys... Valerian and, and Rhaenys Valerian, their two children have died, um, although one of them is actually alive. Um, but that's setting the stage for Rhaenyra and, and Damon to be unwed, each of them. They don't have partners, Taryn. Yes. Uh, specifically, uh, Rhaenyra is without a partner because uh, Harwin Strong uh, and his father have been burned alive as well. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, can't even go to the arms of Harwin Strong or marry Harwin Strong. Uh, he has died in a fire um, by his own brother. Uh, who's we'll 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 meet. I wasn't sure where where to fit him into the story. He's a little. We'll get to to Lara Strong. Yes, um, uh, he's got a he's got a foot thing going on. Yeah, that's the guy. So, as this is happening, as Rhaenyra has sort of like grown up and she has children, and Damon has two two girls from his marriage, um, and then you also have Alicent, and she has uh, three boys as well. Um, the boys have kind of grown up together, these these kids, uh, but it but it's very tense at times. Um, you have Aegon and Aemond Targaryen um, at the funeral for Lena Targaryen. Um, Aemond is the second son of Alicent and, and Viserys, and he has been dragonless his whole life, and he's been ridiculed for it. They once gave him a pig with some wings, and he decides for once and for all, he's going to go get a dragon. He's going to get the largest dragon in the world. He's going to go get Vagar. Uh, who which was Lena's yeah. dragon who burned her alive after childbirth. 
That's right. So Very Aemon, big dragon. So Aemon goes and gets this enormous dragon and claims this dragon for himself. This very much annoys Lena's daughters who were like, mm, I kind of wanted that dragon for myself. And Aemon's that was like, my mom's thing. You just <laughs> stole my mom's dragon. Yo, dude. This is the, the best family, the best, the, the, the turn of events here of like uh, the, the whole family tree is like, you stole my mom's dragon. <laughs> it's a real thing on the show. She, yeah, she's a family heirloom. And um, so Eamon takes it and there's a bit of a confrontation between Eamon and then Luke and Jace uh, actually believe, and Joffrey, I believe is there as well. And then um, and, and, and the girls and uh, ultimately Eamon loses his eye. <laughs> Taryn. Yes, uh, he's kind of yeah. like beating on the girls. And so Rhaenyra's kids start like sticking up for them. And in the resulting fight, Eamon loses an eye. He becomes eye patch guy. Hot take, Taryn. Eamon's my favorite uh, House of the Dragon character. Oh, I boy. love him. I love how just unabashedly kind of evil he is. Although he got made fun of as a kid, so I gotta, I gotta get it. But he's just he, he he literally puts a sapphire in his in the space where his eye was. So now not only he wears an eye patch, but if you ever lift it up, it's a sapphire. There. Eamon also will be sort of used in the show as Damon's sort of like uh, mirror image. Uh, the two of them have like a bit of a rivalry because they're very similar characters. I think there's two things to Eamon, which is that. He is he is very much Damon's counterpart in the sense that he Damon Damon felt that he had like birthright, like by being a male, right to be the king. Aemon has an older brother, but Aegon does not want to be Aegon is like not interested in being king. And so the other important thing about this time, about the tension here, and it does sort of erupt in this moment after one of Rhaenyra's children takes out the eye of Allison's uh, child and they get in quite a spat um, mm. and there's all sorts of things going on. But I feel like this is such a critical moment of the show, which is essentially that Allison has her firstborn. She has the firstborn sons of the Sarah's and her father is saying like, you know, when, when your husband dies, when, when the King dies, the whole realm is going to be like, gotta be a boy. It's gotta, it can't, it can't be a girl. It can't be Rhaenyra. It can't be her. It's got to be a boy. So your son, Aegon, is either going to become king, and so you need to, like, set him up to be king, or Rhaenyra's going to kill your children because she will say there cannot be competitors to me being queen, and she'll kill your children. So this is kind of the headspace that Allison is in of being like, well, I really don't want any of this to happen, but also, like, my dad might be right, and so we need to figure this out. And then Rhaenyra has these children who they think are bastards. So Rhaenyra may have a claim to the throne, but now her children, who would be the next heirs to the throne, are not even Targaryens. Well, they are Targaryens. They're not. They're just bastards. They're also strongs. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of tension about and, and Viserys the whole time. And you said he's your bro. If I'm going to claim Aemon as my bro, then I think it's fair that you claim Viserys as your bro. But my critique of Viserys is the whole time he's like, it'll sort itself out. Let's not talk about the fact that they're bastards. If you do, I'll. Well, uh, to out. be fair to, to our guy Viserys, <laughs> he's dealing with a lot at this point because after the time jump, he's like literally deteriorating, uh, like he's disintegrating into himself. He's the crypt keeper basically at this point. He's like, I think it's not this episode. I think it's very, he, I think, I forgot how soon in the series he loses an arm because mm -hmm. his hand is like not healing. So they just chop off his arm. Um, he often puts his hand in maggots. Um, he's not doing well. I think my, the med the modern medicine of the time does not aid Viserys, but somehow he just keeps living. So he's just decrepit, but alive, you know? Yeah. 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 So he does his best, you know, he's trying, he's trying to, he's trying to keep the peace. We get another time jump. We do. Um, we do get another time jump. Um, yeah. I mean, Things are tense. There is certainly this like this feeling of like, if Viserys dies, we're gonna start to have to make our moves. Um, Rhaenyra and Damon, they get married. They're like, let's just let's just do the thing that Damon always wanted to do. Rhaenyra always sort of like, you know, we could talk about the complications of this relationship, but always seemingly had like, there's definitely like even the first scene you ever see that with them together, they're like definitely flirting. Um, and so they just get married and they are together. And that's like for a lot of the show, for the first half of the show, really, the conflict seemed like it was going to be between Rhaenyra right. and Damon, that right. they were the two competitors for the throne. 
But as Otto is like doing his little machinations with Alicent getting married to Viserys, um, there's a new contender for the throne. And so this is kind of like, uh, you know, they're teaming up. They're like, all right, let's join forces against the high towers uh, because we need each other. We can't be competing. Uh, we need each other here. Um, and so uh, it's like the the super team here. Yeah. And I think this also really solidifies like so this this becomes team black where you have Rhaenyra and you have Dame. She's married to Damon. Um, they have uh, they each have their own children who come from uh, the Valerians. So you also have Rhaenys and Corlys also yeah. sort of in their corner. Corlys is um, not doing super well. He got injured at war, but he he comes back. Um, this is, to the most part, I feel like the extent of sort of their team thus far. I feel like there's a couple other pieces on the green side that that we haven't talked too much about. But you, also, you obviously have Alicent. Um, you, have, you have Aegon and Aemond um, as, as her children. You also have Sir Kristen Cole, who decides at some point that he is in love with Rhaenyra and he would like to run away with Rhaenyra. But Rhaenyra is like, no, I'm <laughs> going to be queen. So no. <laughs> and Chris Cole is not happy about this and basically immediately becomes on uh, Team Green, um, becomes um, the sworn protector of, of Alicent Hightower. Um, and I believe by the end of, uh, at some point, uh, well, we'll get to it, but he's also going to be... Um, uh, he's going to be head of the King's Guard as well. So. Big, big incel energy from Sir Kristen Super. Cole. Yeah, he's like, "Will you, will you run away with me?" And she's like, "No, I'm queen." He's like, and then he oh, dedicates his oh, life man. to destroying her. <laughs> yeah, you also have Otto, who is, um, uh, as we've mentioned, Allison's dad. He actually gets removed as, as hand of the king for a little bit uh, because it's kind of so obvious that he's so much protecting Allison and, and Viserys is kind of, a, it's kind of like one of the bolder moves that Viserys actually does. Um, but when, um, uh, Laris, or, uh, but then whoops, the strongs yeah. die. Yeah. Oh man, how did that happen? Oh, I guess yeah. Otto has to come back. Yeah. There's nobody else suitable for the position. So Otto comes back. So he's, he's around as well. Um, and then as we said, there is, uh, Laura strong who, um, in the show, we'll just clarify. He's, he's, he has a nickname of Clubfoot. Uh, uh, we've had some, uh, feedback to not call him Clubfoot as it is his a condition, a disability he has. Um, I'll say regardless, He's he's also a sleazeball and he kind of sucks. Um, but he's sort of like in the background working for Allison, but also very clear at the same time, not being super um like he'll be like, I'm gonna do this bad thing. And Allison's like, please don't. And then he goes and does the bad thing, and Allison's like, I wish you didn't do that. <laughs> the whole Wink. Time. Uh yeah. no, it's uh he's he's kind of like the little finger of the show in Would the agree. sense that like yeah. It doesn't really feel like he's actually loyal to any one particular side. He's just trying to like sort of stoke the flames as much as possible so that he can climb that ladder of chaos. Um and uh and and what his true motivations are at this point are still pretty vague. Yeah. All right. So I feel like we get to this pretty important moment. It's the night before uh uh, spoiler alert, King Viserys is going to die. But he tries one last, like, let's have a family dinner and let's sort itself. It'll This all will be fine. I believe there's also a marriage where now uh, Rhaenyra's children are going to marry <laughs> Damon's children at this point as well. This is also in the mix. And actually does kind of become pretty important that uh, Jace and Luke, who are uh, the children of Rhaenyra, are betrothed to Damon's, uh, uh, he has twin girls and they are betrothed uh, to the two of them. So once again, trying to reunite the family. Uh, a Aegon is actually married to his sister, uh, Helena Targaryen, who we believe potentially has some sort of future sightseeing. She might be have some prophecy um, ability within her as well, alluded to in season in season one, Taryn. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, she's like muttering some weird stuff. <laughs> and I think important to note that they have a couple of children as well at this point. They're pretty young, um, but but Aegon, our future king, and Helena Targaryen do have children together. Aemon was like, I would have happily married Helena for the duty of, I would have married my sister. Like, like bro, get it together. Aegon's still very much in the like, I don't really care about all of this. If Rhaenyra wants to be queen, she can just be queen. It's fine. But these, the family... As soon as Viserys leaves, he's not feeling well. He goes back. Immediately, they start fighting again. There's accusations of the uh, Rhaenyra's children being bastards. Um, young, strong boys is the toast that Aemon gives. Um, so clearly a lot of tension. 
In fact, the most important piece of this is that the night Viserys goes back to bed is that uh, Rhaenyra, realizing there's a lot of tension in the room, she is pretty uh, determined to make amends with Alicent. And so she says, I'm going to take them back to Dragonstone, but I will return soon. And you and I are going to like be friends again, basically. And so Rhaenyra leaves with this very like, gosh, there's a lot of tension and I just need to figure out how to like clear the air. Unfortunately, she leaves and goes back to Dragonstone, and that night, Viserys dies. But not before Taryn, your favorite part of season one. Yeah, uh, he's he's like talking to Rhaenyra in his mind about like you have to have the throne, uh, and uh, and so on and so forth. And, and 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 Alicent is like, oh, he means me and my sons. Oh man, that was actually even though. He never expressed that ever once in his entire life. On his deathbed, when he was clearly delusional, he finally said the thing. Um, and therefore, through this misunderstanding, I guess we have to go to war. Um, I think this is stupid. I think that this <laughs> the motivation should just be clearly uh, self-preservation, greed, self-interest, uh, whatever. But for to, to have it be a a, a misunderstanding of what a uh, 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 Viserys said, uh, I think is is too. And this is why I feel like how can you be Team Green when like the leader of Team Green is like uh, on a crusade based on a misunderstanding? Yeah. So Viserys dies, and the next morning, uh, Otto pulls together a meeting of the council and being like, "Hey, Viserys died." All right, let's put the plan in motion that we've had for like months. Mm -hmm. And Allison is like, what do you mean? And this is where I think the miscommunication thing breaks down because I think that this is good enough as a storyline without yeah. the miscommunication. Because Otto's like, yeah, if you don't make Aegon king, then Rhaenyra will kill Aegon and Daemon and any other kids you have because she'll need to prove her legitimacy as the queen and as long as they live there will be questions and so she sets this plan of motion and then Alicent is like oh but you're you you then you are going to try to kill Rhaenyra and I don't think Rhaenyra should die and I was like ah, we won't kill her we'll just tell her she can bend the knee and then we'll throw her in her jail cell and then she can like live in exile forever but maybe we'll probably kill her if she says no <laughs> so, and she's like so I feel like there's enough tension in Alicent's mind anyway but she also is then being like, oh, right. But also Viserys did tell me that Aegon should be king last night, even though it's a complete misunderstanding because he's high on the milk of the poppy about what he said. But they do set everything in motion. Uh, the one important piece is here that uh, Rhaenys Targary or uh, Valerian is is in the city, um, but they in the dragon pit, they crown Aegon. Um, and important to note, too, that they use um, Aegon the Conqueror, his crown. Um, there's a line about, like, he has the crown of a, uh, of the Conqueror. He has the name of the Conqueror. He is the rightful king. He gets crowned in front of people, the people of King's Landing, Terrence, so mm -hmm. that his uh, coronation, and it's the first thing, it's the first one that happens. It's like, Viserys died, and Aegon's the king. And that's what the general public is supposed to know based on what happened. Yes, but uh, then Rhaenys, who is uh, the the wife of uh, the sea snake um, and the queen that never was, uh, has to escape because she's gonna she's like she's on Team Black, so she has to get out of there. Um, so she gets a hold of her dragon, uh, bursts into the uh, the dragon pit where they're crowning Aegon, and then uh, doesn't light them all aflame um, for. Not very well explained reasons, as, as far as I'm concerned, in the show the show's logic. Um, and then just flies out of there to warn uh, Rainier about what happened. Love the show. Your complaint is about the miscommunication. This is mine. This is like, they could have just had Rainier like fly out the dragon pit normally. And then like, that's how she leaves. But like, or like, what you know, like there's a back room and she leaves. And it could be the moment where she's like flying away. And it's fine. Instead, they choose her to burst through the floor, which therefore means that she kills many, 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 many innocent civilians. Yep. She just kills them all. And then she does not kill the people who are like, you know, claiming treason. Um, so that just happens. She claims that she does not do it because it wasn't her war to start. <laughs> so stupid. I would say being kidnapped <laughs> is the proclamation of the war having started. 
but right it's also like not her war to start uh how about her war to end, to end. <laughs> yeah. right like yeah. how about ending the war before it begins <laughs> yeah so the only part of that is i really don't like it i really love the like aegon gets conquered or gets crowned uh Kristen cole puts the thing on his head like it's all like legitimate like to the people the the rainy stuff like burst into the floor silly uh helena targaryen is says uh, a beast beneath the boards uh, earlier in the episode thus alluding that she can she has some sort of um you know sightsee for you know future uh seeing abilities um when rainy's pops through okay mm -hmm. rainy's leaves and she flies to dragonstone and she's like hey <laughs> bad news your dad died and your brother got named king and then they just decide well we'll just name Rhaenyra queen um mm. there is some important stuff about like members of the king's guard who like to, so like yeah. um uh we, we have the leader twins. of the king's guard, the, these twins who are gonna be opposite side the crown that viserys wore gets like snuck out um yep. and delivered to uh Rhaenyra. so that's the crown she's wearing whereas aegon's wearing the conqueror's crown um the most important part of of this, you know, Rhaenyra finding out is there's a few things. One is I actually do like the symmetry between Rhaenyra and Alicent in terms of people who were friends at one point and having slightly similar, you know, ideas about what's going to happen next in terms of not wanting necessarily everyone to die. There is such an instinct from everybody around them. So this is Damon and Otto mostly who are like, Let's just like go mess them up. Let's just go like make them bend the knee. Damon's like, we have more dragons. Um, uh, the argument being that the other side has bigger dragons, Vagar being the biggest dragon. There's some debate about that, but Damon's like, let's just go like F them up. And Rhaenyra's like, if I rule over a kingdom that is burnt by dragon fire, what am I really ruling over? Whereas Alicent is like, I really don't want this person who I loved at one point to die. So there's some of that like lingering, even as like the war is bubbling up. Um, but really what's most important here by the end of season one is who's on whose side. And this is where the almost choose thing happens, but we, we get a, a bunch of name drops at the end of season one about particular houses that you might recognize from Game of Thrones, like the Starks, um, like um, the Aarons from the Bale like the Baratheons from the Stormlands, who will choose what side? Will they choose back Rhaenyra or will they choose to back Aegon Terran? Yes. And so that's like the chessboard of the where all the pieces are and who they're loyal to, I think is going to be crucial heading into season two. I think that's a large part of what we're going to see uh, moving forward as they venture into this uh, war that is looming over them uh who can they get on their side uh and yeah the marketing about like what side do you choose i think is relevant in the sense that that is the the question that many people will be asking themselves on the show as well they have to choose a side which side are they going to choose and which side can win them over the most and that's kind of where we leave the season off because rainira sends her sons to go woo some people over to their side and uh things go a little awry yeah so um they are going to send ravens but um young jace who is basically you know if renera is queen he would be your heir, he's the oldest son he says dragons can fly faster than ravens so send us let us do this um she decides to send Jace, being the oldest. He's going to go on a little bit of a longer journey. So he's going to go to the Vale, and he's going to go to Winterfell. So those are two allies. The Vale being the place of like the Moon Door. Um, that's where you might remember a big mountainous, uh, impenetrable fortress. And then Winterfell, obviously, being the home of the Starks. That's where he's going to go. We don't really see he he heads off, but we don't see much of that. Luke, however, is a little younger, so he's going to go on a shorter, safer journey, Taryn, to the Stormlands, uh, where they're going to try and convince Boris Baratheon to align with uh team black however luke arrives and aemon targaryen our one-eyed vagar guy. riding eye patch guy is already there and the conversation happens i believe this is in the show and I'm, whether it's in the books there is a conversation about which one of uh boris baratheon's daughter will each of these boys make and aemon's already shown up and kind of already you know done he's like i got here first i'm i'm here i'm gonna marry one of his daughters we got him um luke does his best to be like i'm not i'm not here to fight i'm here to send you like a thing uh he gets told like will you marry one of my daughters he's like i'm actually betrothed to my like 
cousin sister. So, so no go on that. Um, and so he's going to leave. There, Eamon's about to fight him, but Boris Johnson says, not in the house. No fighting in the house. You may go outside. They fight on Dragonback. And Eamon, with a much larger dragon than Luke's uh, Erex, uh, that's the name of the dragon, or Arex, um, just gets them all. He gets eaten and them all. It's like, I couldn't believe it when I watched it again. He just like is a little piece of crumb that gets like splattered into a million pieces. Um, and that's dies. There's a little bit, I think, interesting, Taryn, that like Eamon looks like perhaps a little bit like remorseful for having maybe killed. Uh, it, it seems as though this was not intentional, that he was trying to like mess with the kid uh, and then whoops, I accidentally killed him. Yeah. So Rhaenyra gets the news. The very last shot we get, I think it's a very powerful image, is Rhaenyra turning around a little bit hardened, devastated, etc. cetera. Um, that's the last shot of season one. Um, while they are going to try and get sides, there's also been a very clear declaration of war and like blood has been spilt a dragon has died and a child has died so that's where we end season one taryn i don't know that we i don't know if we missed any other big notable things i feel like we we're pretty awesome but uh did we miss anything or should, you know what are we looking forward to to season to season i mean of, of course just keep an eye on um uh on on the remaining strong um laris who uh is he's you know he's got a thing for feet uh going on um, So this is the thing taryn i i reread yes. an interview uh with him after season one i really didn't like this because i felt like it was somebody who had a disability who was then having a fetish about their own dis and like the thing that they couldn't have and i really didn't like it i actually did read an interview where he talks about that he actually never looks at the feet and it's actually about making somebody else feel as ashamed about their feet as he does so he basically makes allison like show her feet and then they do whatever they're going to do. I thought that was like more interesting than like how I initially read it. So even there's things that I didn't love from season one that I'm like interesting, but uh, yeah, Laris does seemingly have some form of like foot shame fetish, if not a foot fetish. So, right. Yeah. Uh, and he seems to be like the really like the, the, the biggest power player in terms of just like making things happen um and is very dangerous in that sense so like a very dangerous kind of kind of third party that's being used by team green but uh like who knows what he could be up to um and uh and so like moving forward again i think looking at season two it, throughout season one lots of time jumps like lots of history and backstory getting us to the point where Rhaenyra turns around and looks at that camera at the end of season one. Um, and that is a promise of what's to come, as I would imagine that the, the, the war that is looming over them is about to heat up pretty dramatically. The timeline is about to slow down. Uh, I don't expect that we'll have nearly as many big time jumps, uh, if, if any at all. They might you know, have some, some small ones here or there, but nothing that would like stand out in the way that they did in season one. I think they might just feel a bit more natural now as we like hone in on the events that are about to occur. Um, and I, I think this is going to feel a bit more like Game of Thrones, uh, like House of the Dragon felt like Game of Thrones, maybe like the Better Call Saul to Breaking Bad in terms of like Game of Thrones, right? Like it was mm -hmm. it was similar feeling, but a little slower, a little more deliberately paced. Um, I think that things are Kind of about to kick off in the same way that they did with Battle Call Saul because that was very good. Um, <laughs> and so uh, I would expect some big moments. I would expect a lot of, um, you know, maybe some battles, maybe some uh, diplomatic, political warfare going on, some strategy. Uh, you know, I think like uh, there's a lot of uh, potential here as uh, as things heat up. Yeah, uh, I mean, they're dragons, of course, it's going to heat up. Uh, you know, I, I the idea that it's like, I, in my mind, like a lot, of, yeah, a lot of battles where where um, maybe territory needs to be, you know, there, it's a, it's going to be to some degree a battle for Westeros. I think one thing, or is Westeros is humongous, like it is really huge. Um, I, I think that the King's Road has been built at this time, but not to the extent that it's like it is by the time we get to Game of Thrones time. So um, just in terms of like, 
a big battle here. Like, but the the other thing is like we are in a in a war. Um, we are also though technically in a civil war. And the idea that this is like a family fighting against, and then people are going to have to choose sides. And the idea that um, some houses don't want to get involved, but have to figure out how they can get involved. Like, is it worth it to fight in a war over this family who is you know ruling over us? Uh, when both sides have dragons and you don't. And you don't. Yeah. So um, it'll be very interesting because I think as important as it is, is like the moments where they get, there are battles uh, over places. It will also be important where there are not battles, because as you said, like this is where like, can I convince them not to come here and not to fight me? Like, how could I do that? You know? Um, so I, I love it. I think in terms of the stuff we really loved about Game of Thrones and some of the stuff we were saying in Tastemakers about actually the show Shogun. I think that like this is where you'll start to see a little more of that, where I think we've started the show with really getting to know the Targaryens and and kind of on the you know the other side being the high towers. We know these two sides. Now who else is involved and who else is going to play? Well, I think still keeping us centered on those the people we've known. Um but we are really going to expand into Westeros in a way that um for the most part House of the Dragon was King's Landing, Dragonstone, a little bit of the Stepstones. That's kind of it, Taryn, right? Like, I think that the, mm -hmm. I think the exciting thing of this is we might go back and visit some of those places like Winterfell, um, like, Lan like you know, uh, Lannisport, uh, Lannister territory, that type of stuff that I think um, is going to be pretty fun heading into to season to season two. Yes. And, uh, and and don't worry, of course, if you continue uh, listening to our coverage. Uh, we'll we'll be here to to fill in any holes. Uh, yeah, I know it's a. Hopefully the the recap helped sort of like stir some memories up, but there's definitely still a lot of names and characters um, that uh, we can certainly help with once the episodes start rolling as well. Um, but uh, I'm excited. I think that there's a lot of potential here in season two. I think that they showed a capability to do really well in season one. So uh, I'm hopeful. There was a couple of things I had an issue with in season one that I, I hope they don't fall into in season two, but uh, but we'll see. They, uh, I think I'm excited. Episode one is directed by Alan Taylor, who has worked on such shows as The Sopranos, Oz, Mad Men, uh, Game of Thrones. Uh, so he interviewed the vampire. He did a couple episodes. He's a very established director. Uh, so they've clearly put uh, their trust in a trusted hand i guess and ryan condal wrote episode one um so i feel like we're in for a good episode i know nothing about it i know that uh uh some there have been uh, premieres i believe one of the premieres was like a black uh like you know uh, team black premiere and one of them was a team green uh premiere they've been having fun with the marketing there but um i don't know anything about episode one we'll be live right after the episode um on june 16th sunday june 16th so the episode starts at 9 p.m no indication of for me for runtime yet but we shall see but uh you should be able to listen to it almost as soon as uh the episode ends whether you join us on on youtube or wait for it in your podcast feed but i'm very excited taryn house of the dragon yes. it's back it's back and we're back so uh hopefully you uh join us over uh the course of this season as we as we watch as we see <laughs> see what happens to the uh to westeros here maybe uh, we'll see the wall we can be watchers on the wall we have not seen the wall in this iteration of uh of the show yet i don't believe but uh hey, like and subscribe we're... very helpful uh early on both on the youtube uh channel as well as in the feeds uh give us five stars very helpful as we uh are relaunching a uh, scripted tv coverage here on rob as a podcast it's very exciting. fresh stuff yes yeah. so thank you thank you uh if you do uh and if you don't that's fine you know but you're on team green <laughs> yeah uh we know we know where your loyalties lie listen if you don't subscribe if you don't leave a rating if you're not doing those things we know we know we all know we know you like misunderstandings oh i like to be <laughs> i like to be wrong um all right well thank you all so much for joining us here hopefully uh you have now learned everything you need to know heading into house of the dragon season two and uh we will see all of you soon when the season starts.